At Ellsworthy's Retina Vision, we're more than just the best price. We'll give you expert advice for the huge range of big brand products. Locally owned and operated in Geelong, Ellsworthy's Retina Vision will give you more every time. If it's a big screen TV you're after, or a top brand washer or fridge, we have the best range to choose from. Come into Ellsworthy's today at two big locations, Mirable Street, opposite Skill Stadium in Geelong, or Warren Ponds Homemaker Centre. Ellsworthy's Retrovision. So in there's Dwyer, kick off the ground. Was it in danger? No. Chipping back there's Cartledge, that's Blair. He gets it, goes dangerously across goal. Still a chance. Picked up by Byers for Leopold. Switches play to the outer side of the ground. Nice play, and the mark's been taken on the halfback flank. Leopold left halfback flank, call to play on. So Leopold will come out of defensive 50 towards the centre corridor. Bruin, he's hard up there. Oh, good work by Fletcher. Well done, got it off to a teammate. Grovedale will go forward again. Inside 50, they trail by 16 points, and the mark taken by Allingham. So here an opportunity for Grovedale with a good kick, found the target, and Allingham has already booted one, one of many. Grovedale goal kickers, uh, well they've got nine individual goal kickers Simo and Allingham with a 45 degree angle to contend with, 40 metre kick, he allows, it comes Whoa. back, it comes back beautifully, the margin back to 10 points here in the Blood Toyota match of the day. Really taken them apart in that last quarter, the Allingham, he's provided a focal point uh, up forward and doing a great job. Yeah, he's been fantastic. Now, the ball in the middle has been pushed towards uh, from the central from the central tap out. Is so, there time, fellas? I reckon there is. It's on the wing, out of sight of the ground, been kicked forward on that occasion by Mark Gilman for Leopold. It's at the half forward line, it's gone out of bounds, there'll be a throw in. Well, it's the Lions and the Tigers. A great game here before our eyes, and I hope you're enjoying the call on Geelong's RPH 99.5 FM. The umpire's called a ball up from that throw in. So we're on the half forward line, bit of push and shove. Grundle and, and Bruin uh, having a few words. At it. Yeah, they're still going. Bruin and Grundle's a bit of whoop, 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 but nothing really in it. As the ball towards the centre of the ground. Here come Leopold, the Lions. They kick it inside 50. Big pack, big punch, I should say, from over the back towards the boundary line. Bit of a push there, too. If the footy umpire says nothing, it's going to be another throw in. Although Grovey going to the goal scoring end. Collins doing the ruck work on this occasion. Got it off to a teammate. Eventually it comes down to Byers. He goes forward. It's going to be Grovedale through Martin coming away though. He spots up a target in Allingham. He's been superb in this final term. Wild does the roving work. Gets it off to a teammate. Can they set something up? It's Johnson. Johnson goes around the body. Looks for Bond. Finds him just inside the boundary line. Clever mark by the little man that uh, only a couple of years ago won the uh, Allthorpe medal in the GFL. Reserve grade for the best and fairest player in that competition. So Bond now goes inside 50. They need a punch Grovedale. They get the punch that they required. Wilkinson doing the work at ground level. Couldn't get a clean possession away. Oh, he's got a teammate working very hard, keeping the ball moving. Wisely so. Bond again. Handball off. Key play here for Leopold. If they can get another major now, the game's all over. Across the face of goal. Martin, he's going to try to run off Grundle now. If he can, this could set up a forward foray for Grovey. He can't gather a clean possession. Eventually, he sees the ball over the boundary line. The scoreboard says that it's 11 points. But uh, I can tell you, fellas, that I reckon we've got the scoreboard right. 11, 13, 79 to 10, 9, 69. And that's, uh, well, Ben. Ben, what's Ben's last name? Ben McPherson. Ben McPherson does a tremendous job downstairs for us looking after the uh, scoreboard. I reckon he'd have it right. So, 10 point margin to Leopold. Ben McPherson, we've got Dean Bushell. He's giving us away. He's the cameraman. Jack grabs us. Where's Cusworth, Craig Simpson? Well, we hope you're enjoying the action. It's quite a good game. Doesn't mean of a, uh, well, terrific standard, but it's close. And a quick kick off the That's ground. It. The umpire holds his hands up. The goal umpire, is he going to, what's he going to do? Goal. The Blood Toyota match of the day. Couldn't spot the goal kicker. Wasn't even sure that it came off the boot. But away we go again. Wilkinson leaps high above Wild. Does the ruck work, but to uh, no real advantage because Leopold come away with it. They go inside 50. Here's an opportunity for a consolation goal. Or oh, grabbed very high on this occasion was Wood. Yes, that's the way the umpire saw it. And I think that was a good decision despite the... Uh, well, the upset that it's caused the Leopold bench immediately to our right. And Wood, wearing number 14 for Grovedale, comes outside defensive 50, goes to the outer wing, looks for Bruin, in fact, Allingham, but no, Wilkinson drops the mark, should have taken that. Allingham has been a live wire, goes short, looks further afield. That uh, player that he was looking for was Scott, had it punched away from him. Leopold and Grovedale doing battle for it at ground level before the umpire intervenes. The ball at centre-half forward for Grovedale, they're heading towards the Melbourne end. Yeah, they certainly are. So now it looks like it's 85 to 69, 16 points to the margin, Leopold ahead. They're going to win out here. 
and uh, going to win uh, which Memorial Trophy? The Fred Glidden Memorial Trophy here, which is played for each time these two clubs meet. It's Grovedale and Leopold. This is the signals a halfway mark of the season too, Jack. Yes, it certainly does, and uh, there's a couple of players pushing and shoving there, so obviously things weren't happy out there. Ruck work now, done by Wild, although it's to the advantage of Grovedale. Grovey come away, go to centre half forward now, Bird the target, or almost a mark taken on this occasion by Mark Hughes. Can Bird get it off the ground? It's uh, drawn back into the attack by back into the pack by Pritchard and eventually the umpire intervenes and says we'll have another ball up so there's been plenty of umpire intervention today usually because there have been many stoppages and as we press hard towards the end of this game we've gone 26 minutes on the toy out of time clock and it's Leopold by 16 points out here at their home ground the sand paddock or the sand uh, it's almost like a, a dune out here in certain parts of the ground the ball in possession of Grovedale's Michael Barrett a, a goal kicker in the second term for the Grovey Tigers, but eventually the umpire intervenes. Yes, it is like a sand pit almost out here. It's a bunker, in fact, Jack. They've put plenty of sand on it. Might be quite that bad as the pictures on Guest Media Productions video from Dean Bushell there would show that there's a bit of grass on the, where they are just at the minute, but there's plenty of sand in other parts of the ground. Now, Wood, Adam Wood kicked the first goal of the match. He's got it for Grovedale, and he pumps it from the half-back line to the half-forward line. It's been forced over the boundary line by Matthew Brune, and there will be a throw-in. Grovedale, 69, Leopold, 85. So the scoreboard not quite up with Bruins it uh, yet again. Dollars. Has he? There's a big loss. Yeah, is he coming yeah, off, Jack, yeah, or is he just going to shake yeah, it off? He's pretty he's tough. Again. He's pretty tough. Daniel Fletcher's got it for Grovedale. Gets a handball back. Good work on that occasion. That's gone to Doolan, the wild colonial man. He's got it. He's kicked it to half forward, but Leopold from half back. Kick a bouncing ball now to the wing. Oh, it just took a, did a uh, well, it stopped almost. That's pretty hard to read when things like that happen, but it might have landed in the sandpit. Pretty Big pack of players. You would think there was a bit of pushing in the back there, Jack. Yeah, the young bloke again, that was Bond again to the bottom of the pack, and the, he's not getting anything for his... Uh, uh, work blow there. I thought, you know, he got a bottom of the pack trying to get the ball out and they jumped on him, but no free kick. Wilkin, Wilkinson wins it away, but it's the Leopold boys roving to Wilkinson on this occasion. He's got a slight advantage over Wild, albeit that it's been a pretty even battle today. Bird on the run, kicks inside 50. His target was a, a teammate and his brother, Adam Bird. Eventually the ball off Leopold hands over the boundary line, just some 20 metres around from the Grovedale goal. Leopold 12-13, 85 and they lead Grovedale 10-9-69. This is the blood Toyota match of the day, and we are hard up against the final siren. 28 minutes gone, according to the Toyota time clock, in this final term. Purton does the ruck work for Leopold, wins it down to his side's advantage, and Leopold, through a succession of handballs, get it back to Purton, and he eventually comes to the left halfback flank. Sends it forward, finds a teammate in Grills. Grills eventually runs it over the line. And whilst Grills has been quiet in that second half, one can't help but think that he was instrumental in Leopold, at least keeping pace with Grovedale in that first half, a couple of good runs up the ground and also an important goal. Yes, Grills, lucky in the first quarter, kick one goal. And uh, it was certainly was a good player early. Faded towards the second half of this game. The ball thrown in now. There they go again. Wild and Wilkinson, like they have done all day. Little tap forward from Shay, um, Daniel Sullivan, but it's been picked up by uh, well a Leopold teammate. Kick further and afield. Bond, the mark by Bond. So Bond has it this time. Jack, he's got it. Didn't give away a free kick. Didn't get thumped. He's handballed to the coach. That's got to be a good move. He's given it to Wild. Wild kicks it further afield and a lovely mark taken. Now, was that Grundle? Yes, yeah, Grundle. Could be the last kick of the day, fellas. I reckon the siren will go any stage. Now, Grundle was a fantastic mark. He made front Strong. position, but Nathan Martin's been good. And, Jack, you've read it. Yeah, you're good, Jack. You are. You, you've got something going on <laughs> with the timekeeper here. I don't even know where the time is. Just had a guess. Well, it wasn't there, was it? That is tremendous. I'll tell you what. Simon Grundle's got the footy. They've won the game, Leopold. They are 16 points ahead. Let's see what the final margin is. It's going to be 17 or 22, I reckon, after this. 16 it is at the minute. He's put it on its way right through the middle. 22 points the margin. Simon Grundle celebrates. Hi. Not all burger joints were created equal. With 20 mouth-watering burgers available, all cooked to order, using fresh, premium quality ingredients. We're pretty sure you love every last bite. We're located at 320 Packington Street in Newtown, 51 Moorable Street in Geelong, and for information on the menu, check out burgerinc.com. So come on in, we'd love to feed you.